Hello again. I have the two X-Tech EX540s reassembled. I thought I'd give you a quick update as far as what I found with this new meter. Both the new and old meter use a derivative of the AD636. The component used on the older meter is made by Cyrus Tech and that part is an ES636. The CJ part used on the newer meter is an AD636. It is not made by analog devices. I traced out how the chip is wired on both meters. It appears to be the same. They both use a 4.7 microfarad for CAV. The plus and minus supply for both meters measures roughly the same. What they've done is they've taken the output and they fed it back to the buffer input, which is pretty common. But rather than using the buffer out, they feed through a 1K resistor. The 1K then feeds a ceramic capacitor. I'm not sure of the value, but that's in parallel with a 1 microfarad tantalum. The main controller chip on the new meter is not marked. It is on the older one. It's made by Cyrus Tech, and it's part number ES51966P. If I look at pin 6 relative to the common, and I turn the meter on, after some time, this voltage will begin to drift. And that's exactly what the meter is doing even when the input's grounded. So what I did is I grounded this pin one back to the common and I reran the test and indeed this output still drifts. So it doesn't do it with the old meter, it only does it with the newer one. So I suspect that the RMS to DC converter that's made by CGA behaves a little differently than the Cyrus Tech part. I'd like to swap this out for the part that was made by Cyrus Tech. I couldn't find a place where I could actually get one. Another option would be to tack in a part from analog devices. Uh, they don't offer one in surface mount. Maybe a, possibly a metal can could be tacked in place of this. The problem really is the cost of the part. You're looking at you know a thirty to fifty dollar component depending on what one you use. You know, really is the meter worth it at this point? I don't think so. Currently, I have the inputs of the two meters tied together in parallel, and these are attached to my flute calibrator. These currently don't have the batteries installed. Instead, I'm powering these both off of a power supply, and the Bryman is used to monitor the voltage of that supply. And you can see I'm running roughly 6.79 volts right now. Both meters are reading roughly 10 volts. And now we can see it's 6.646. In the upper right, the battery indicator is flashing on the older style meter. If I just hold the mode here and you can see in the upper right it still has that indicator but you can see it's not on and you also notice that the contrast is very good for this meter so it appears that the low battery indicator no longer works but what's kind of odd about the new meter is it'll actually function a lot lower than the older one so right now I have a capacitor in parallel with the power supply that's driving both meters. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. And you can see how the older style meter will actually drop out much earlier than the new one. There's our low battery indicator. The meter on the right is completely dead now. We're all the way to 5.3. The new meter continues to function just fine there. It just washed out. You can see both meters are now selected for AC volts. I've supplied a 5 volt signal to both meters. Next I'll remove the power and we'll see how much these deviate as the uh, power supply drops. So 
So again, both meters are still set on AC volts. I'm going to turn on both meters simultaneously and we'll see how long it takes them to settle out. That's about it. So now I have 50 millivolts applied. And I'm going to again turn them both on simultaneously. Looks like they both settled out. And again, if I turn on and off the backlight, you can see it's causing a problem with this meter. I suspect that's actually due to the power supply. Yep. It's because both power supplies are tied in parallel right now. But again, you can see it's not nearly as dramatic as when we put a short in. So again, I've got the inputs of this meter now shorted. And again, you can see it's quite stable. Until we get to the point where it times out whatever it's doing. And there we go again. Again, looking at the original meter. Again, no effect. As you can see, I've got 10 millivolts applied. We can see it about doubles the voltage. You can see it slowly drifting back down. And let's try that again with the older meter. Again, this is roughly 10 millivolts applied. Okay, you can see I have a 1 volt, 20 hertz signal applied to both meters. What I'm going to do is increase the frequency now and let's just see where the 3 dB point is. I guess the meter won't display it, but this is currently 10 kilohertz. You can see it here, 10 kilohertz roughly. This is roughly 11.6 kilohertz. You can see both meters have roughly the same roll off. You can see I'm applying a 22 volts, 1 kilohertz waveform to both meters. You can see both meters are set to the AC plus DC mode. And what I'm going to do now is full rectify this. And you can see both meters are reading roughly the same value. Obviously, if we deselect the AC plus DC mode, We'll see the AC content only, or we can switch it to DC. 
and there we can see the DC content is roughly the same between both So we've got 2 kilohertz on each meter. Again, that's because it is being full wave rectified. Just looking at the case that comes with the X-Tech. See it's this nice hard plastic. We've got the manual up here. There's a CD for the software. Again, this meter has a RF link. So let's see it here. This plugs into your USB port. And you can actually talk to this meter using LabVIEW. I've done it. Works fine. Comes with a fairly decent set of leads and one thermocouple with a standard adapter. It also includes this magnetic strap. So accessory wise this meter comes fairly complete. Again I've had the older meter for quite a few years and it's worked fine. I think this one here will work out okay. And yeah, what do you say about the quirks it's got? I mean obviously the fact that it was missing the shield, missing the washers, you know, there was a lot of solder issues with this. You know, would I recommend buying one of these at $300? Probably not. For the $300, you could actually buy this Bryman BM869S. It's a little larger than the X-Tech, but it's certainly built to a much higher standard. The one thing this X-Tech EX540 has is an RF link, which isn't offered with the Bryman. At least not that I'm aware of. If you own one of these and it starts out with serial number A140, that's what this meter starts with. I've communicated with another member who has the same meter. His meter starts with that same serial number and it appears to behave the same way as this one. I think that's going to be it for all my testing with this meter. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'd like to welcome any of the new followers that have just joined. If you like seeing meters tested to destruction, this is definitely the place to come. I do have a new meter here that we're going to be testing pretty soon, so stay tuned for that.